And with me is Mr. Mhumodasis from Petroleum Authority Uganda. He's a stakeholder manager. He's going to be giving us more on these details in regards to the opportunities for the national content. You're most welcome, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have um, uh, many projects under development. We have the Lenga project, which is operated by Total, uh, with joint venture, you know, and then we have um, uh, Kingfisher development area, which is operated by, by SNOC, uh, with the joint venture of, uh, of you know, Kigan National Oil Company. Then we have uh, Eco East African Crude Oil Pipeline that is also developing. Uh, it is operated by, it is with four partners, four companies, Government of Tanzania, Government of Uganda, Total Energies, and SNOC Uganda Limited. All those projects, we expect an investment of about 20 billion US dollars, um, about 10 US dollars, uh, billion US dollars in upstream, that is Lang and Kingfisher, and of that, about 7 billion dollars contract have been signed, uh, where we have about 40% of 7 billion US dollars which are signed, uh, uh, went to Ugandans. Those contracts went to Ugandans. So, then uh, ECOP also have, uh, we have an investment of about $4 billion and we have different companies and subcontracting to Ugandan companies is going on. Uh, last week we had Schneider, Electronics, and Bolel and, uh, and uh, other contractors, Taiwan contractors in, in, uh, and Wari. They were here to, to see uh, which, which segments or what they can subcontract to Ugandan companies, and many companies showed interest. Uh, when we talk about employability, so far we have about 70,000 uh, employees in the sector, uh, involvement phase, and 70,000 uh, 70, employees, uh, about 95% are Ugandans. Appearing. That brings me to my next question. These projects are mainly in places like Hoima and the western side of the country. Are they also limited to the people only in those places in terms of job opportunities for these guys? Uh, national jobs are, of course, advertised in national newspapers. We also for, the companies also follow national oil and gas talent register. Uh, then we have what we call same skilled jobs. Those same skilled jobs uh, we do, we get from very villages or the areas where uh, the projects are taking place. Like when there is uh, any any work in a certain village, let's say in Kingfisher, uh, like in Uhuka where we have work going on, they will get people to do some skilled jobs from that area of Uhuka. So far we have employment, uh, we have people from all over the country working in the sector. Uh, so far, all the regions have balance in the sector, uh, depending on the talents, uh, depending on the... Uh, because most of the jobs advertised in national newspapers, then uh, uh, the shortlist, uh, people apply shortlist, do interviews, then uh, do the appointments. So it's a national project, and... Uh, uh, but maybe some pretty same skilled jobs, those are the ones which are recompensed for locals. Then, uh, don't look up about direct employment. We have other opportunities, which uh, we have other opportunities, supply of foods. Government of Uganda reinvested about 16 services and uh, products to purely Ugandans, including transportation, including transportation, talk about uh, communication, legal services, food and beverages, all those. So, and uh, food come from all along. Like now, uh, in the northern region, as you've said, we have activities going on in the Noya districts, Noya district and maybe Pakwach where we had some exploration and uh, uh, specifically in Noya, people are getting employed uh, from Noya, same skilled, same skilled people are getting employ employment uh, from Noe. Uh, that is part of Northern and other areas. So uh, it is a sector that actually oil and gas now is the sector that employs the biggest number of Ugandans. We're looking for at today's exhibition, we've seen you come to, for example, Makere University. Are other universities also getting these services or it's only this one? 
Uh, so far, we have, we have been doing this uh, to different universities. We do career talk, we, uh, career guidance to different universities. We've done with Chambogo University, we've done with Makere University, Nkumba University, uh, UPIC, Uganda Petroleum Institute. Then also, there are some MOUs with the universities, universities and oil companies, like now Shlambaje has a, uh, an MOU with uh, UPIC to train, then also taking, um, take, um, take internship and, and maybe employ, employment opportunities come later. Then we have like SNOC has a name OU with Makerela and the, and the, and the Chambogo. Then we have also we have also Total Energies. So we do a lot of career guidance and uh, to enhance those opportunities. Uh, and also we even go down uh, and do talent register to different universities to pick different talents to showcase their uh, capacities. Which challenges are being faced as the projects are, carry, are being carried on? Uh, one, uh, as per se, no major challenges apart from the advocates again, the advocating against the project by different uh, interest pressure groups. But of course, we do overcome them. They get so many get cause. Excuse me, hold on. They get so many cases on us, but really we have been, we have all the mitigation measures. Uh, let's talk about environment. We did environmental social impact assessment studies. We had the recommendations. We came up with uh, uh, social management plans uh, for every recommendation. Uh, like now we have the influx of people. We have social management plan. We have, uh, we have transportation. We have culture. All those recommendations that came up, we have social management plans. Uh, so oil and gas is on a safe course. We are moving on and really uh, we can see what we used to say in uh, one, one, two years ago about these opportunities, about uh, oil and gas moving further, about these contracts. Now we can see them, people are seeing them physically. What we are saying and people are not believing us, now people can see and even those who did not prepare when we are telling them, kind of prepare, kind of prepare, now they have, they can see those opportunities. Some have signed mega contracts. As I've told you, we have 63 subcontractors, uh, contra contractors, major contractors and subcontractors in the sector here in Uganda, and of what mo mo most of them, they are Ugandans. And as I've told you from the beginning, uh, about seven billion US dollars that have been signed by different companies. 40% are Ugandans, and this is something that we started from the beginning uh, trying to promote national content. Uh, so I always call Ugandans, let's embrace this opportunity, let's step into this opportun the opportunities we have now and benefit from oil and gas. Thank you very much. So by 2025, we expect the fruits to be gained from this oil and gas sector? Oh, well, as, I, uh, as you can see, uh, oil and gas is taken care already. We did exploration, we did the appraisal, then now we are involvement. Kingfisher, we started the spudding, the rig is there. They are, we, uh, we spudded on, uh, on 24th uh, January this year, so now they are drilling, uh, they are drilling production wells uh, for Tlenga, uh, the rig, the first rig arrived, they are assembling it. We are spudding very soon. Other two rigs are arriving and their components. So it's really a beehive of activities and no doubt we are going further and we will be in, uh, in Tanga 2025. Uh, on ECOP, we are delayed by land acquisition, uh, especially because of some challenges. We had Ebola in Mubende, so we did not do uh, we, we had uh, almost um, some years of um, hold, but now we are above more than 70% land acquisition in ECOP. Uh, the enabling works for temporary camps and the material yard, uh, they are going on soon.